Hey guys, what is up? Look who's here. Yay, Joni. Those of you who follow our channel, you guys know that I spent 18 months doing upgrades and maintenance and all that kind of stuff on our coach. But the other day I was talking to Joni and I just happened to ask her, I said, what do you think are the top 10 things that we've done that have made our life easier, full-timing and traveling? We came up with that list and we're gonna share that with you today. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. This list is not in any particular order. None whatsoever. Random is good. Yeah, these are the top 10 things that made our traveling and living full-time in our RV easier. So here we go. Number one, taking out the factory couch and putting in a new love seat. Yeah, there used to be a J couch or an L couch or whatever you choose to call it in there. And it was six and uh, nine and a half feet long. Yeah, it was huge. And it was very uncomfortable. And none of those chairs in the couch reclined. Uh, it was stiff as all get out. And so even sitting in that couch and trying to watch TV was like, okay, no, this is not going to work. No, not at all. So after researching and getting online and looking what the standard sizes of couches and love seats and all that were, I realized that 80 inches was one of the standard sizes. So I told Joni, go on the hunt. Find us a love seat that's 80 inches wide. So as I started researching this, the criteria was that I had to find a love seat that was a wall hugger. It had to hug the wall so when you reclined, there was, there was room for it to recline. Also, I wanted one with a console in the, in the center of it. Mm -hmm. And I finally found one. And the color was perfect too. Yeah. Yeah it, yeah. it it had a dark browns and light browns and man it just it just went perfectly with the color scheme that was already in the coach from the factory. So I ended up buying a love seat that was bonded leather and it was a piece of junk. It After, lasted two years. Yeah. Yeah, two, two and a half years. I mean it all started flaking apart. So I went on the hunt for another one. And now we're up in Maine, two years later. You know, when you look for these uh, furniture stores that, that specialize in RV furniture, <laughs> man, they are so expensive. And plus you have shipping and all that stuff. We, I mean, we were looking at $2,500, $2,800. So we're in Maine. We're walking into regular furniture stores. And we found one. We're like, okay, that's it. And I think we paid $1,250 and change for that. They wanted 150 bucks extra to have it delivered. And I said, now we'll go back and get our brother's truck. We'll pick it up. <laughs> and we installed it that afternoon and that was done. And we are so happy and it makes watching TV a breeze. Well, now we have a small love seat in there and that opened up an area for Martin to be able to build a desk in there for his workstation. So I took that area that was left over and I sketched out a drawing and figured out, okay, this is the amount of room I have. I went and got the wood, but it really took a lot of time for me to kind of figure that all out. The couch and the office, the two really nice things that have made living and working and watching TV a whole lot easier. Absolutely. Number two, one of the things that I really love is we installed uh, window awnings over our windows. So as when the sun is hitting our windows, we just pull those down and we don't have the sun beating into the motorhome. Yeah. We discussed it and we thought, well, you know, let's have our main awning and the toppers all done so everything is all going to match. And be new. Yes. And we had that typical uh, factory thin vinyl toppers and main awning and it was already tearing. I, would, I had already made a few patches on it to keep it from continuing to tear. Duct tape. It wasn't <laughs> duct tape. I don't do duct tape. It was a clean repair, trust me. Mm. But they were old, they were yeah. thin, they were wrinkly, and I thought, you know what? If we're gonna get window awnings, let's just do the whole works. So we were in Florida, is a company called Stone Voss. I'll put a link below if you're interested, but these people were awesome. Yeah. And we worked for them and we got new main awning, 
two new toppers, and these toppers are the thickest in the industry, 19 mil. We designed the window awnings so they matched the main awning. We got top of the line material. They ordered it, they sewed it right to the specs for this coach. We took it over there, they installed it. Yeah, they were really great. They I mean, really it were. was bam, 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 bam. And when it was done and we opened everything up, I was like, wow, that looks so, so good. And here's the thing I like about those window awnings. What? It provides privacy. That's what I was going to say. It allows you to do those private things. Well, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> well, it does. The other thing I like about it, though, is we can have our windows open when it's raining. Exactly. Number three, tinting windows, our windshield brow, and our shade covers. Now, we've lived in Houston, Texas for years and years and years, and it gets hot there. And you just learn to have tinting on all your windows on your vehicle. I mean, that's just what you do. So what we did is we had the cabin windows up in front. I'm not talking about the back of the coach the front of the coach where we're driving. Man, we learned very, real quick that when you're driving, you got that sun blaring through the windshield or off to the sides in the morning or afternoon. Man, it makes driving brutal. So I had him do the side windows in one shade, and then I had him come back and do the top, the very top panel. You know those little thin panels right above the driver side window and the passenger window? where you get that sun coming in at about four o'clock right on you. Yeah, that's brutal. It is. Uh, so I had him put limousine up there, and then we had him put a 12-inch brow uh, on the windshield. And whether you're in the morning or you're coming into a campground in the late afternoon, and you got that sun coming right in that windshield, man, that brow is like, That yes. was huge. That was, that was absolutely huge. Yeah. I mean, having that just made it a whole lot better. He used 3M film, and I let him put it on. This is all he does all day long. I wasn't even about to touch to do that work myself. I wanted a clean job, and I wanted it done right. And just one quick note about this. Yes, the tenting is legal. The other thing that was huge to us is once we parked, we put on our window screens. Ah, yeah, the window screens. Yes. And these window shades are five years old. They look fantastic. They're still tight. And it's another way to have more privacy. So anyway, the window tinting and the window shades was a great, great upgrade and makes our life a whole lot easier yes. and cooler. Yes, absolutely. Number four, the drawers in the galley booth. Wow, I would be miserable without them. This is a biggie. This is huge to me. Now, we did have storage space under the booth seats, <laughs> but watch this clip on what that was like back then when we first got the coach. So when we first bought the motorhome, there was storage underneath both of these booth seats. But to get to those that storage area, I had to do this. Take this off. Take this off and remove this piece of plywood. There was absolutely no way was I going to go through that every time I wanted to get into here. That was absolutely ridiculous. So can you imagine <laughs> trying to do that or having to do that every time you wanted something out of there? Because we don't have a pantry. We don't have one, no. So after we saw that problem and Joni asked me, Martin, is there something we can do with this? This is what it looks like now. So I asked Martin if it was at all possible to, to have drawers put down here instead of going through all of this every time I wanted something in there. And he said, well, let me take a look at it. And sure enough, he was able to get all the materials and, and even look at this, look at this. It even matches the cabinets up here. So now all I have to do, check this out. This is now my pantry. How awesome is that? I love you, Martin. All I had to do is I called Winnebago. Now bear in mind, a 2012 coach, I'm a second owner. I'm calling them in 2017. And I said, yeah, I need one of these cabinet doors. And they looked it up through my VIN number. They saw the build sheet and they said, yep, how many do you need? And I said, I need two of them. 
But then I went and bought some birch. I bought the rails. Now those rails, did you see how far out those drawers came? I mean, those rails are about two and a half, three inches thick. And they're, I think one was 42 inches long and one was 36 or 38 inches long. I don't remember. But those rails were 125 bucks a pair. Mm. <laughs> so, it, so realistically, it took me about 500 to $600 for materials. And then with me and T, our friend, we built the, he, well, he did most of the building, but we figured out how to design them and build them. And then we both installed them. Big, big upgrade. Huge yeah. upgrade. Number five, the way I set up my water and my water softener. When you are traveling full time, you're constantly moving all over the place, setting up water, breaking down water, setting up water. And I'll tell you what, that becomes quite a chore if you don't have it done right. And I tell you what, I was not going to go there and I said, I'm going to figure out a plan on how to do this right and make it fast. When we land somewhere, that's the first thing I do is I set up water and softener and then I'll give her a knock on the side of the couch and she knows she's got water. And that takes me three minutes. And honestly, the way he has it set up, it's so simple that I can walk out there and do it with absolutely no problem. Yeah. It's simple. This is in real time, but I'm actually speeding it up because even though it takes me three minutes, I know you don't want to spend three minutes watching me hook up my water. So just check this out on how fast this is to hook up my water. The first thing I do, once we back up, I take my Clorox cleaner and I spray the whole entire handle up underneath here and the nozzle here. And that way, as I'm getting the rest of the gear out, it has a chance to sanitize. So the first thing I do is I take my regulator, my Y and my inline filter, and I put that on first. And then I take my channel locks and tighten it up. Then I take my custom made length hoses that go to the filter, to the uh, water softener, I mean, and I disconnect them here and I feed them through the hole, through the hole. My in and my out. You see how easy that is with those quick disconnects? Then I bring my pan here, my bucket, and with a quick disconnect, I run it through the bottom and snap that right on there like that. Then I take my bucket here and put it up underneath. And now I'll rinse out a little bit of that water, connect my hose, and I'm good to go. The water is hooked up to one, two, three filters, and my water softener. And after doing that, we have safe, triple filtered, good tasting, softened water throughout the entire coach and in our fresh water tank. And I'll tell you the one thing that really makes this whole thing work as well as it does is my brass quick disconnects. <laughs> he loves those things. <laughs> I mean, I talk about them all the time. You would not believe how many kinds of quick disconnects I used. But wait, he talks about them in his sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I must have wait. I, I can't tell you how many pairs of different kind of connect, uh, connections that I tried. They all failed. They all leaked. This set, now, I, of course, I bought several pairs to make this all work like this, and they're not cheap. But it's a one-time purchase. They're all machined together. And you know what? These ones I'm using right now are five years old, almost five years old, and they're still using the same washers. And they don't leak. Okay, so before we get into the next five things that made our life easier, please don't forget to go to our main YouTube channel page right up here and click playlist. And when you click playlist, that's gonna take you to a library of a multitude of different videos that I've done already that will really help you uh, take care of your RV. I mean, we don't have to go to the School of Hard Knocks, right? And these videos, I show you step by step how you can do 80 to 90% of these things all on your own. I mean, you guys can do this. So be sure to check out this, this playlist right up here. Okay, back to our regular scheduled broadcast. Take it away, Joni. Thanks, Martin. Number six, shoe rack and my closet. So when we first got the motor home, we bought a metal rack that would slide under the foot of the bed to put our shoes on. We bought it at Walmart. 
you know, I was like, this will work great. Because when we slide our, our bed in to close up, only the top slide, so this was a perfect spot to put a shoe rack. Yeah, it fit <clears throat> perfectly right underneath the bed. Every time that we moved the motor home, the shoes were falling off or they were slipping through the, the, the racks and it was it was just a disaster. Yeah. And I finally just got fed up with it and I says, oh, please, Martin, please, would you just build me a shoe rack so we can get rid of this piece of... Junk. Junk. Wasn't what I was going to say, but <laughs> junk works. And so we were at a campground at that time. I forget which one we were at, but they had a wood shop there. I made, you know, I measured the dimensions. I went to Home Depot, I bought a bunch of wood and went to the wood shop and used their saws and cut it all up and glued it and stained it and, and it fits right, again, right underneath the yeah. end of the bed, but no shoes falling And through. it holds a whole lot more shoes. A lot more shoes, And yeah. they're not falling out anywhere, so that made me very, very happy. And you know, you would think, okay, shoes, is that really something that made my life easier? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, it made me very happy. It did. It did. It, it really did. And it's all about making your little woman happy, right? Indeed it is. And there was something else. Yes. The other thing is my closet. Oh, yeah, the closet. Yeah. That was another source of irritation for me because, <laughs> you know, everything was packed in there so tight. You know, the regular standard uh, wardrobe type closet where everything hangs. It was really difficult for me to find things and I just I hated it so uh, again I said Martin can you please put shelving in here for me <laughs> I want to be able to fold my clothes and just put them in there without constantly fighting hangers and and whatnot she wanted to be able to rotate her clothes right I mean when you're full timing you have your summer wear and your winter wear I ended up making her some shelves and it ended up opening up a huge area below where she can store her kitchen appliances, like her air fryer. Now, let me just ask you girls out there, okay? Come on. What woman would not want your closet to house all of your clothes and your kitchen appliances? I think every woman out there does. <laughs> they really want that. I mean, you that. know, this is a no-brainer. Hey, so, you, you got to do what you got to do when you're in a motor home and space do. is limited. You got to make every yeah. inch count. Yeah. So those shelves in her closet made her life so much easier. So much easier. Number seven, Martin got rid of the old factory sink and put in a new one. Okay, wait a minute. I'm going to say once again, I was whining <laughs> and I said, Martin, I hate this sink. I really hate this sink. I was it's, with her on this, by the it's, way. Please, 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 just give me one big, deep sink. Yeah, I mean, you know, we had this, again, a 2012 old, divided little, it was plastic. It really was. It was plastic. Once again, I got out my tools and pencil and paper. How large could I cut that existing countertop and put the largest sink in there possible. You know how it is when you get on these rabbit hole hunts on the web trying to find exactly what you need? It has to be the right length, right width, right depth. But I finally found one. I got out my jigsaw and I cut out a new hole, put in that new sink, and I thought I'd treat her to a nice little treat. And I gave her one of those big fancy <laughs> hose handles that comes out where she could, oh, she was ecstatic. And that sink has made our life oh, way easier. Number eight, putting vent covers over our roof vents so we don't have to worry about when it rains. You can leave, you can have your coach vented so you have cool air coming in there and you never have to worry about the rain. Yeah. Now we have three roof vents because we have two bathrooms. So we have a, a, a vent over our master bath we have a vent over our half bath, and we have one over the kitchen area. So if you remember, when I redid, I redid the entire roof. That was one of the first things I did when we bought this coach. And I did a video on that, uh, actually just recently. So if you wanna see all what I did there, you can watch that video. Our factory vents, you know the kind that you crank up and they, they open up? Well, those were clear plastic, and now they're all yellow and faded, and they just look like hell. So I took those off. I put new tinted vent covers on top of that. But then I added 
the vent covers on top of those. But with these vent covers, it, it, it not only protects it from rain, we don't have to worry about that, but it also adds uh, additional protection when you get a really hard rain or if it's um, hailing and that type of thing. I mean, vent covers, it just allows us to keep the vents open all the time and allows a nice breeze through the coach. Yes, absolutely. Okay, number nine. And I actually brought this one up to Martin because I think it has made our life a whole lot easier. And I said all of the insulation that Martin did in the coach. Um, it makes our life easier in the sense it's easier to heat and it's easier to cool. So now we don't even have to worry about our pipes freezing anymore. Hmm. We don't have to worry about uh, cold drafts coming in underneath the slides because I put foam covers in there and I made those uh, insulating covers for my slides. We have our trash can underneath our sink and when I would open up the cabinets to throw something into the trash, yeah. I could just feel the heat. Yep. I mean, just the heat pouring out of there. And, and the same with the overhead cabinets mm -hmm. in, up in the cabin. We'd open up our cabinets in the cabin area where you store stuff. And man, in the summertime, you could yes. just feel the heat rolling out of there. And so I finally put this on my list. I am going to inspect every inch of this coach and take care of all these heating and cooling problems. All those situations have been taken care of. Yes. And I think the biggest one, when you open up the door and you walk up the steps and close the door, that step right there, and that's where cold air would just mm. roar through there in the winter. And so I built this step cover out of insulation material where it covers that step area and it literally just knocked that cold air and we just store that right in behind our love seat so it doesn't take any storage room it's lightweight hmm. and that was a biggie yeah number 10 chassis upgrades i know most of you if not all of you like us you're driving your class a motorhome and especially if you have a gas motorhome man there's all kinds of things you're running into driving this motorhome right 18 wheelers blowing by you, crosswinds, the pounding on rough roads and all this stuff. This was one of the most important things I was gonna tackle right off the bat. It took time to do this. I did it in stages. What I did is I diagnosed each particular problem and I came up with a plan on what needed to be done. But as a quick overview on the front, and I made notes here so I don't forget this, because sometimes my mouth gets ahead of my brain and I don't say stuff right. You've seen that happen a lot, right? I have. <laughs> <laughs> but on the front of the chassis, I did the cheap handling fix. I installed a safety plus and I installed new shocks and I installed sumo springs. On the back of the coach, I installed the cheap handling fix, a super steer rear track bar, new shocks, and then I installed Centromatic rings all the way around on all four tire positions. But I go into all details of that in the video. So if you're interested in that, you can watch that. So those are the 10 things, not the 10 most important things, but that made our life easier full-timing and traveling. Do you have any last comments, Joni? Anything you'd like to add? Any wise words? Uh, I love you. You're my superhero. Is that good? That's excellent. Okay. These things that we did definitely got our RV martinized. There's no question about that. And I'm always martinizing our coach. Dude, something, something. You're always I mean, martinizing something. I'm mart. <laughs> <laughs> so to wrap this up, guys, please don't forget to use our Amazon store. The link to that is down below <laughs> in the description text. Whatever it is you need, whether it's in our store or it's not in our store, if you use our Amazon store link and go shopping and put the stuff in your cart and check out, we get a small commission from your purchase. And I'm going to tell you what, it's a great way to say thank you, Martin. Thank you, Joni, for producing these videos and helping the RV community. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of you folks have been using our Amazon store. And all we can say is thank you. Thank you. Seriously, thank you, thank you. And don't forget to subscribe. 
push that subscribe button, ring the bell off to the side, and that way you'll be notified whenever we upload a new video. We did this video while we're down here in RGV, Rio Grande Valley, yeah. in El Dago County. And we're getting ready to leave here, I don't know, in about 10, 12 days, something like yes. that. So when you're watching this video right now, we're probably going to be very close to where we're going to be spending the summer, which is... Well, Maine, of course. We're going to be going back to Maine. So anyway, that's it for now, guys. Until next time, this is RV Street. Stick, Stick around. around.